sell to your list differently. At this point, you have turned social media traffic into list members. Congratulate yourself. You've managed to do something the vast majority of social media marketers cannot do or, worse yet, don't even think about doing. It's quite an accomplishment. Unfortunately, even at this point, it's still too easy to drop the ball. In fact, a lot of people who have mailing lists stay with one mailing list. They think that as long as people who visit their blog sign up to their mailing list, they're good. Well, at a certain level, they're correct. A certain percentage of those list members will buy affiliate products that you promote on your list. A certain fraction of your mailing list will buy your original products. Some may even visit your online store and buy merchandise. But the problem here is that if you accept this scenario, you are settling for cents on the dollar. You really are. Don't you want to maximize the value of all your hard work, focus, and energy you invested in your venture? Wouldn't you want to maximize your return on effort? If you want to get maximum results from your mailing list, you have to sell your list differently. There are really no two ways about it. Every other approach would lead to, at best, mediocre results or, at worst, no results at all. Keep the following tips in mind. Use different content on your list. When people join your mailing list, chances are they join because they got exposed to some of your content. They already know what you talk about. They are already familiar with the quality of your content. They understand the themes that you focus on. That's why it doesn't make any sense for you to feature the same exact content on your list. Sure, you may make some changes. You might change the title. You might even switch things around. But people aren't dumb. They can see right through that. They can see that you are recycling content and feeding them stuff that they have probably seen before. Do you think this kind of practice builds confidence? Do you believe that doing things this way will build trust? Of course not. You have to use different content. What kind of content will you have to use? Well, first of all, you already know what your most popular pieces of content are. Start with these. No, I'm not talking about republishing them. I'm talking about analyzing them and seeing where the gaps are. Are there any questions that are left unanswered? Are there any questions that were raised by the answers that you gave in those popular pieces of content? These should be enough to get your mind going as to the kind of finely tuned, high-value content that you're going to be sharing on your list. Remember, your updates are the ultimate reward to your list members. Sure, you may have positioned your squeeze page to reward subscribers with a premium, but once they downloaded that premium, they really have no other incentive to keep reading your emails. Do you see how that works? So do yourself a big favor and make sure that the update content you send is the reward. That's how you get people to open your emails and read your materials over and over again. Reward them for being on your list. Don't drop your guard. Don't take it easy. Don't give in to laziness. This is your time to rise and shine. Everything else that happened before this was just a dress rehearsal. This is it. This is where the rubber meets the road, and you better perform. Use premium content. If you really want to hit the ball out of the park with your mailing list, send updates that really highlight how original the content is. Well, how do you do this? Use social proof for case studies. These are testimonials of people that have taken your advice or who have experienced certain things that you talk about. When people read these stories, they can't help but be engaged. They can't help but be absorbed into the narrative. These people sharing their testimonies are real flesh and blood human beings with real problems that your readers can relate to. That's the kind of compelling content that will take your list to a whole other level. Why? Most of your competitors are just recycling their stuff. Sure, they're recycling their best stuff because that material is tried and proven, but they're not really distinguishing themselves. They're not really doing their brand any favors by taking the easy way out. You have to commit to doing things differently. This is how you build loyalty around your content. Remember, when you're running a mailing list, your content is composed of the emails you send out. No more. No less. Upsell, upsell, upsell. I can't say the word upsell enough. If you want your list to make money, you have to upsell. Now, you don't have to be a hero. You don't have to overdo this. You don't have to come off like some sort of super salesman. If you're like most people, you know how annoying pushy salespeople are. You probably will push back. You will probably tune them out and unsubscribe. I can't say I blame you. That's how most normal people respond to pushy salespeople. By upsell, I am just telling you to send content that highlights a problem and a solution. That's all upselling is. You remind people of their range of problems, and you remind them of certain solutions to them. Now, of course, just like with most things in life, there are good solutions and even better ones. Your job is to send email updates that get people excited about finding a solution and laying out common solutions that are good, but are not the best. 
What you're doing here is you're drawing their attention to the very best solution to their problems. For example, if you run a social media marketing mailing list, you can tell people that creating picture quotes and videos from pictures is a great solution to their original content needs. But an even better solution would be to automate these materials where people just click on images and all of a sudden, a video is created. It saves a tremendous amount of time, effort, energy, and most importantly, the created video would then automatically be uploaded to their social media accounts. That's the kind of distinction between good enough solutions and obviously superior solutions. That's how you upsell people to your list. You're still providing value. You're still answering their questions. You're still addressing their needs. But you're laying out a range of options. They can try to do things on their own or try to do things the way most people handle the problem. Or they can try something else. When they look at that something else, that's when you sell your affiliate product, your original product or your service. Regardless of how you do it, you need to upsell, upsell, upsell. I wish I could tell you that this was easy. I wish I could tell you that this is just a simple matter of laying out some alternatives and then playing up the best solution. The best solution, of course, pays you a commission and you make money off each sale. Unfortunately, it's not that easy and it's not that simple. Here's the reason. When people join your mailing list, they actually have different motivations. Some people are there because they just want to get the freebie, but they're too lazy to unsubscribe. You cannot really get rid of these people. These people don't open your emails. They cannot be bothered with reading your emails. They really don't do you much good. In fact, they can harm you because if there's enough of these list squatters on your list, your mailing list provider will charge you more money at the end of every month. You have to actively filter out your list based on open rates so you can get rid of these individuals. Again, you cannot eliminate them entirely, but you can minimize their numbers. Other people are initially excited about your mailing list, but for some reason they stopped reading your emails. Even others constantly check your emails, and they really love what you have to share, but the problem is they feel that your premium offers are simply too expensive. Now let me clue you in on a secret. When somebody tells you that whatever you're offering is too expensive or too unaffordable, what they're really trying to say is that you haven't completely sold them on it yet. Alternatively, you haven't completely filtered them yet. Either they're not motivated enough or you did not give them enough reasons to be motivated. Regardless, they're still on the fence. You need to push them off the fence. Expert salespeople know this because in the big scheme of things, there's no such thing as unaffordable. If you talk to somebody and you convince that person that they absolutely need to buy your product, there's really no difference between a $10 product and a $1,000 product. They will get that product because you have elevated their perception of that product to the realm of need. People take care of their needs first. Their wants are often left at the back burner. I hope you understand this. I hope you get this. It's not because your affiliate product is too expensive in absolute terms. Instead, it's because you have failed to either qualify the prospect or make your case. And this is why simply upselling by itself is not going to work. You have to take the next step, which I'm going to describe below. Use the $1 list filtration method. You have to filter your list members into two groups, interested people and interested people who buy. These are two totally different groups of people. Now, please understand that just because people open your emails religiously, it doesn't necessarily mean that they would buy from you. Like I said above, maybe you did not present your case properly. Maybe you did not qualify them properly. This $1 list filtration technique that I'm going to teach you enables you to filter your list members properly. What you would do is, instead of trying to upsell people to $19.95, $34.95, or $349.50, or any other similarly priced products, everything that you're going to be selling on your general list will be priced $1. No more, no less. By general list, I'm talking about the list all people who sign up to your mailing list get on. This is your default list. I want you to treat this general list as your starting list. This is kind of like the vast, unfiltered, generic mass of people who are interested in your brand. When you upsell people using $1 offers, you enable people to segregate themselves based on their motivations. These are people who are motivated enough to spend $1. In other words, they see the value in your content and they are willing to put their money where their mouth is. Now here's the secret. There's really very little distance between paying $1 for something and paying $100 for something. This is a lesson I learned firsthand. When I first tried this, I thought the only people that would get on my dollar list are cheapskates. These are misers. In the back of my mind, I thought that they're just not going to buy big ticket items. Boy, was I proven wrong. 
If somebody is able to psychologically hurdle the distance between zero and one, they can, given enough exposure and enough content, hurdle the difference between $1 and $100. This is not theory, nor is it speculation. I see this all the time with my own two eyes. Your job is to filter your general list. You're basically telling people, when you run these $1 offers to prove to you whether they are just interested or truly interested, this is a self-segregating mechanism. Use it. People who sign up for your general list are interested in quality content. That's what they're there for. But only a fraction of them would actually be willing to pay money. You make your money off this golden fraction. You use your buyer's list to make real money. Again, you have to sell your list differently. This applies to your two types of mailing lists as well. Your general list, they get quality information that is distinctive like social proof and case studies along with upsell messages. Your buyer's list, on the other hand, gets more in-depth material with higher value upsells. Again, if somebody's willing to go from zero to one dollar, you have a tremendous opportunity to get that person to go from one dollar to one hundred, one thousand dollars, or whatever amount you want. Now, keep in mind that the higher the dollar value, the lower the conversion rate, but you get the point. You have to get people to segregate themselves based on their readiness, willingness, and eagerness to buy. And since $1 is essentially friction-free, this list filtration method works like a charm.